fasten your seatbelts. International travel is taking off at O'Hare International Airport. So much so that U.S. Customs and Border Protection is predicting the airport may exceed pre-pandemic passenger levels. Joining us to talk more about this is LaFonda Sutton-Burke, Director of Field Operations for the Chicago Field Office of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Director, thank you for joining us. Um, first, as the director for the Chicago Field Office, tell us a bit about your role at O'Hare. I am responsible for the Chicago area port um, that is um, managed by the area port director, Shane Campbell. I'm also uh, responsible for three other areas within the Chicago field office, uh, the area port of uh, St. Louis, the area port of Minneapolis, and the area port of Cleveland. So. Right. Overall, about 28 ports of entry within this uh, area of responsibility. And I would imagine because of Chicago's position, uh, it's, it's a lot of, it's a big area to, to be in charge of. Yes, it is. It's in the top 10 in the United States. So since October, your office has processed more than 1.73 million international travelers through O'Hare. Um, you are expecting to uh, get up to pre-pandemic or exceed pre-pandemic numbers of 6 million passengers. That was in 2019. Um, to what do you attribute this uh, volume in travelers? I think the bottom line is that the, um, the COVID um, uh, restrictions are, um, are lifting, the mask requirements are lifting. Um, we have a low rate of um, uh, infections that are occurring. And so more and more people are becoming um, more confident and comfortable in traveling. Do you have any concern? Because obviously we're talking about this, uh, this new Omicron subvariant, uh, Stealth Omicron. Any concern about the impact that might have on, on your travel numbers? Well, as you stated, we're at about 1.73 million over the last six months. Um, this same time last year, we were at 700,000 passengers, the same time frame, which uh, today we're at a 148% increase. The entire fiscal year for uh, FY or fiscal year 21 was 2.2 million passengers. So we do feel that we're going to be on track to, uh, you know, exceed the numbers that we received, not only in 21, but in FY20, we had 2.7 million passengers total. And we are implementing or we have implemented several things to help uh, facilitate uh, the flow and decrease wait times, such as the tr trusted traveler programs, um, TSA pre-check, the global entry, which decreases uh, passenger processing times um, from 60 seconds down to about five seconds, and then also simplified arrival by a metric facial comparison, which is touchless. And it allows for that, um, you know, decrease of spreading germs and protecting not only the traveler, but also my staff. Because that was going to be my next question. As you mentioned, in fiscal year 2021, there were over 2.2 million travelers compared to 2.7 million in 2020. How does your office uh, prepare uh, differently as those numbers fluctuate? I mean, you said this time a year ago it was just 700,000 at this time. That's true. So um, trade and travel facilitation um, is our primary mission. Um, you know, but we are not going to compromise national security. But some of the things that we do to prepare is that we monitor um, the wait times. Uh, we uh, ensure that we're communicating with our stakeholders, uh, such as Chicago uh, Department of Aviation and all of, of the airlines that um, are, um, you know, uh, operating within the Chicago uh, area port. And what are some of the best ways for travelers to stay up to date um, on international uh, COVID restrictions and changes? I think the best way, um, one thing I would like to, to just add is, you know, ensure you have the valid passport or a trusted traveler program card or enhanced driver's license or tri tribal card. But you can also check the CDC website, Centers of Disease Control website to ensure you have the most updated information on ensuring that you have your vaccination card um, with you. 
and that um, you attest to uh, the fact that you are vaccinated when you travel. And I would also recommend that U.S. citizens um, also look at the peak hours and um, maybe attempt to travel during non-peak hours. Um, you know, big COVID waves in other parts of the world. I think right now some countries in Europe are experiencing this. Um, how do those waves uh, affect the traffic flow that you see or expect to see here? Well, currently we don't anticipate that those waves will be um, an impact based on the communications that we've received uh, with the airlines. However, um, to be honest, there are time frames when if it's a high um, surge in a country, those um, countries are, are limiting the ability for the individuals to, to fly in and out. So it depends really on the, the rate, either low, medium or high, if there will be any challenges with those flights coming in. OK, and, and briefly before we let you go, Director, you mentioned a number of programs, uh, Trusted Traveler Program, TSA PreCheck, Global Entry. What's the best place for a, a traveler to go to learn more information about those those programs and, and if it's right for them? So I recommend to go to cbp.gov, it's U.S. Customs and Border Protection.gov. Um, you can also um, go into um, Google search for Global Entry our Google search for TSA pre-check. Um, and I do believe that um, for um, global entry, the Chicago uh, field office um, at 610 South Canal Street has a global entry processing uh, office and so does the okay. International Airport. All right, a lot of good information. Uh, LaFonda Sutton Burke, Director of Field Operations at Customs and Border Protection, Chicago Field Office, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And we're back to wrap things up right after this. Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by Alexandra and John Nichols, the Jim and Kay Maybe family, the Polk Brothers Foundation, and the support of these donors.